Problem solving is an essential skill that children need to develop in order to become successful adults. It allows them to overcome obstacles and make decisions that lead to positive outcomes. As a parent or caregiver, it's important to encourage problem solving in children from a young age. Here are some ways to help your child develop this important skill. Encourage creativity. Creativity is essential for problem solving. Encourage your child to think outside the box and come up with unique solutions to problems. Provide them with opportunities to be creative, such as drawing, painting, and building with blocks. Ask them questions that require creative thinking, such as how would you make a bridge out of these materials? Or what could we do to make this toy work better? Let them make mistakes. Mistakes are a natural part of the learning process. Let your child make mistakes and encourage them to learn from them. When they encounter a problem, ask them what they think went wrong and how they can fix it. This helps them develop critical thinking skills and learn from their mistakes. Teach problem-solving strategies. There are several problem-solving strategies that children can learn, such as breaking a problem down into smaller parts, brainstorming ideas, and testing solutions. Teach your child these strategies and encourage them to use them when they encounter a problem. Provide opportunities for problem solving. Provide your child with opportunities to solve problems on their own. For example, give them a task that requires problem solving, such as figuring out how to make a toy work or how to build a fort. Encourage them to come up with their own solutions and support them as they work through the problem. Encourage collaboration. Collaboration is another important aspect of problem solving. Encourage your child to work with others to solve problems. This helps them develop communication and teamwork skills, which are essential for success in school and in life. Model problem solving. As a parent or caregiver, you can model problem solving for your child. When you encounter a problem, talk through the steps you take to solve it. This shows your child that problem solving is a valuable skill and gives them a real life example to follow. Encourage persistence. Problem solving can be challenging, and it's important for children to learn to persevere even when things get difficult. Encourage your child to keep trying and not give up. Help them break the problem down into smaller parts and take it one step at a time. Praising their effort and progress, even if they don't succeed, can also motivate them to keep going. Foster a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that intelligence and abilities can be developed through hard work and dedication. Encourage your child to have a growth mindset when it comes to problem solving. 
Teach them that it's okay to make mistakes and that they can always improve their skills. This can help them become more resilient and confident problem solvers. Provide a variety of challenges. To develop problem solving skills, children need to encounter a variety of challenges. Provide them with puzzles, games, and activities that require problem solving skills. Encourage them to try new things and explore different ways of approaching problems. This can help them build their problem solving skills and become more adaptable and flexible in their thinking. Use real life examples. Using real life examples can help your child understand the importance of problem solving and how it applies to their daily lives. Talk to them about problems you encounter in your own life and how you solve them. Ask them about problems they encounter at school or with their friends and help them come up with solutions. This can help them see problem solving as a valuable and relevant skill. Celebrate successes. When your child successfully solves a problem, celebrate their success. Praise their effort and creativity and encourage them to keep using their problem solving skills. This can help them feel proud of their accomplishments and motivated to continue developing their skills. Provide feedback. Providing constructive feedback can help your child improve their problem solving skills. When they encounter a problem, ask them questions that help them think critically and reflect on their approach. Encourage them to consider different solutions and evaluate the outcomes. This can help them develop their problem solving skills and become more confident and independent thinkers. Encourage decision making. Problem solving often involves making decisions. Encourage your child to make decisions on their own, even if they're small ones. This can help them build confidence in their decision making abilities and develop their problem solving skills. Provide them with opportunities to make choices, such as what to wear or what game to play. Use technology. Technology can be a valuable tool for developing problem solving skills. There are many apps and games that can help children build their problem solving skills in a fun and interactive way. Encourage your child to use technology for problem solving, but also ensure that they're using it responsibly and safely. Encourage critical thinking. Critical thinking is the ability to analyze information and make informed decisions. Encourage your child to think critically by asking them open ended questions and challenging their assumptions. This can help them become more independent thinkers and better problem solvers. Provide opportunities for reflection. Reflection is an important part of the problem solving process. Encourage your child to reflect on their problem solving experiences and think about what they learned. Ask them questions such as what worked well? In today's world, environmental issues have become more pressing than ever before, with global climate change. Loss of biodiversity and pollution threatening the health and well being of both humans and other living organisms. As a result, it's essential that we start instilling environmental awareness and consciousness in children from an early age. In this essay, we will explore ways to help children develop cognitive skills related to the environment. Early Childhood Development Research has shown that the first few years of a child's life are critical for cognitive development. 
During this time, children's brains are forming crucial connections that will shape their cognitive abilities for the rest of their lives. Therefore, it's important to expose children to environmental education and experiences from a young age. One way to do this is by creating a stimulating environment that incorporates natural elements such as plants, animals, and other natural materials. By doing so, children can observe and interact with the environment around them, which will help to develop their curiosity and interest in the natural world. Another way to promote environmental awareness in young children is through storytelling. Children love stories, and by telling them stories that focus on environmental themes, we can help them understand complex concepts in a way that's easy to grasp. For example, stories about animals and their habitats can help children understand the interdependence of species and the importance of preserving natural habitats. Elementary School Years As children progress through their elementary school years, their cognitive abilities continue to develop. And they become more capable of understanding complex environmental issues. One effective way to help children develop their cognitive skills related to the environment is through hands-on learning experiences. Outdoor activities such as gardening, nature walks, and wildlife observation can provide children with a first-hand understanding of the environment and its importance. These activities can help children understand the concept of sustainability and the importance of conserving natural resources. In addition to hands-on experiences, children can also benefit from classroom instruction on environmental issues. For example, teachers can incorporate environmental themes into science, social studies, and language arts lessons. Providing children with a well-rounded understanding of the environment and its importance. Middle and High School Years As children enter their middle and high school years, they become more capable of understanding complex environmental issues and are better equipped to make informed decisions about environmental conservation. Therefore, it's important to continue to provide them with opportunities to develop their cognitive skills related to the environment. One way to do this is through community service projects focused on environmental conservation. For example, students can participate in local beach cleanups, tree planting events, and wildlife habitat restoration projects. These activities not only provide students with an opportunity to give back to their community but also help them understand the importance of taking action to protect the environment. Another way to promote environmental awareness in older students is through research projects focused on environmental issues. Students can conduct research on topics such as climate change, water pollution, and deforestation, providing them with a deeper understanding of these complex issues. Encourage exploration and discovery. Children are naturally curious and enjoy exploring their surroundings. Encourage this by taking them on nature walks, visiting local parks or nature reserves, and letting them play outside. This will help them develop an appreciation for the natural world and learn about different ecosystems and the animals that inhabit them. Foster a connection with the outdoors. Children who spend time outside are more likely to care about the environment. Encourage them to develop a connection with the outdoors by letting them play outside, go camping or hiking, and participate in outdoor sports and activities. This will help them develop a sense of responsibility for the natural world and learn to appreciate the value of green spaces. 
teach about environmental issues. As children get older, it's important to teach them about the environmental challenges facing the world. This includes topics such as climate change, pollution, deforestation, and loss of biodiversity. By educating them about these issues, we can help them understand the impact that humans have on the environment and inspire them to take action to protect it. Provide opportunities for service learning. Service learning is a teaching and learning method that integrates meaningful community service with instruction and reflection. By providing opportunities for service learning focused on environmental conservation, we can help children develop a sense of responsibility for the natural world and inspire them to take action to protect it. Use technology to enhance learning. Technology can be a powerful tool for environmental education. Interactive games and apps, virtual reality experiences, and online resources can help children learn about the environment in a fun and engaging way. By incorporating technology into environmental education, we can help children develop a deeper understanding of the natural world and inspire them to take action to protect it. Encourage critical thinking. Encourage children to ask questions and think critically about environmental issues. This can be done by asking open-ended questions, providing them with opportunities to research. And investigate environmental topics and engaging them in discussions about current events related to the environment. By encouraging critical thinking, we can help children develop a deeper understanding of the complexities of environmental issues and inspire them to find creative solutions to environmental problems. Emphasize local and personal impact. Sometimes environmental issues can feel overwhelming, especially for children. Emphasizing local and personal impact can help make the issues feel more tangible and manageable. For example, teaching children about the impact of litter on local waterways or the importance of reducing their own carbon footprint can help them understand that their actions can make a difference. Incorporate art and creativity. Art and creativity can be powerful tools for environmental education. Children can express their understanding of environmental issues through art, writing, music, and other forms of creative expression. This can help them develop a deeper emotional connection to the natural world and inspire them to take action to protect it. Celebrate successes and positive changes. Finally, it's important to celebrate successes and positive changes related to the environment. This can be done by highlighting environmental success stories in the news, celebrating local conservation efforts, or recognizing children who have made positive changes in their own communities. By celebrating successes, we can help children feel empowered and inspired to continue making a positive impact on the environment. Integrate environmental education across the curriculum. Environmental education can be integrated across a wide range of subjects, including science, math, social studies, and language arts. By incorporating environmental themes into various subjects, we can help children develop a well-rounded understanding of the environment and its importance. For example, in science class, students can learn about the water cycle and the impact of pollution on water resources. In math class, students can calculate their carbon footprint or the amount of energy used in their homes. Children develop at their own pace and reach milestones at different times. However, when a child is consistently behind in meeting developmental milestones, it may be a sign of a developmental delay. 
A developmental delay refers to a child's inability to reach developmental milestones at the expected time. Early detection of developmental delays is important, as it can help the child receive the necessary interventions to improve their development. In this essay, we will discuss the signs of developmental delays in children and ways to help children improve their development. Signs of Developmental Delays in Children There are several signs that indicate a child may be experiencing developmental delays. These include Delays in speech and language development If a child is not babbling by 6 months of age or is not saying their first words by 12 months, it may be a sign of a speech and language delay. Delays in gross motor development If a child is not able to sit up without support by 9 months, crawl by 12 months, or walk by 18 months, it may be a sign of a gross motor delay. Delays in fine motor development If a child is not able to pick up small objects using their thumb and index finger by 12 months, it may be a sign of a fine motor delay. Social and emotional delays if a child is not responding to their name by 12 months, is not smiling by 6 months, or is not showing interest in other people by 9 months, it may be a sign of a social and emotional delay. Cognitive delays If a child is not able to understand simple instructions by 2 years of age or is not able to follow simple commands by 3 years of age, it may be a sign of a cognitive delay. How to help children improve their development Early intervention is key when it comes to helping children improve their development. Here are some ways parents and caregivers can help children improve their development. Encourage communication. Encourage children to communicate by talking to them, reading to them, and singing to them. If a child is experiencing speech and language delays, consider seeking the help of a speech therapist. Promote physical activity. Encourage children to engage in physical activity by providing them with opportunities to crawl, walk, run, jump, and play. If a child is experiencing gross motor delays, consider seeking the help of a physical therapist. Encourage fine motor activities. Encourage children to engage in activities that promote fine motor development, such as playing with blocks or drawing with crayons. If a child is experiencing fine motor delays, consider seeking the help of an occupational therapist. Foster social and emotional development. Encourage children to interact with others and build relationships. If a child is experiencing social and emotional delays, consider seeking the help of a therapist or counselor. Provide a stimulating environment. Provide children with a stimulating environment that encourages exploration and learning. This can include books, toys, and activities that are appropriate for their age and developmental level. Causes of Developmental Delays Developmental delays can be caused by a variety of factors, including genetics, environmental factors, and medical conditions. Some of the most common causes of developmental delays include Genetic disorders Genetic disorders, such as Down syndrome or Fragile X syndrome, can cause developmental delays. Prematurity Premature birth can lead to developmental delays, as premature babies may miss out on important developmental milestones in the womb. Environmental factors Environmental factors, such as lead exposure or malnutrition, can affect a child's development. Brain injury Brain injury, such as from a head injury or infection, can cause developmental delays. 
Hearing or vision impairment Children with hearing or vision impairment may experience delays in language and cognitive development. Interventions for Developmental Delays When a child is experiencing developmental delays, early intervention is key. The earlier a child receives interventions, the more effective they are likely to be. Interventions may include Therapy, therapy, such as speech therapy, physical therapy, or occupational therapy, can help children improve their development. Educational interventions, educational interventions, such as early intervention programs or special education services, can help children with developmental delays. Medical interventions, medical interventions, such as medication or surgery, may be necessary to treat certain medical conditions that can cause developmental delays. Behavioral interventions, behavioral interventions, such as applied behavior analysis, can help children with social and emotional delays. Assistive technology, assistive technology, such as hearing aids or communication devices, can help children with hearing or speech impairments. The role of parents and caregivers Parents and caregivers play a critical role in helping children with developmental delays. Here are some ways parents and caregivers can help. Be patient and supportive. Children with developmental delays may take longer to reach milestones, so it is important to be patient and supportive. Advocate for your child. Be an advocate for your child and work with their health care providers and educators to ensure they receive the necessary interventions. Provide a supportive environment. Create a supportive environment that encourages exploration and learning. Celebrate progress. Celebrate your child's progress, no matter how small, to help build their confidence and self-esteem. Take care of yourself. Caring for a child with developmental delays can be stressful, so it is important to take care of yourself as well. Use positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement can be a powerful tool in encouraging children to make progress. When a child achieves a developmental milestone or shows improvement in a particular area, praise and reward them. This can help to build their confidence and motivate them to continue making progress. Incorporate play-based learning. Play is an important part of child development, and incorporating play-based learning into a child's routine can be an effective way to help them develop new skills. Incorporate play-based learning. Play is an important part of child development. And incorporating play-based learning into a child's routine can be an effective way to help them develop new skills. For example, playing with building blocks can help with fine motor skills, while playing with a ball can help with gross motor skills. Provide structured routines. Children with developmental delays may benefit from structured routines that provide consistency and predictability. As a parent or caregiver, you want your child to have every opportunity to develop their skills and interests. If your child has an interest in graphic design or art, there are many ways you can support their development and help them grow their skills. Firstly, it's important to understand the basics of graphic design and art. Graphic design is the art of visual communication through the use of typography, images, and other visual elements. It can be used for a variety of purposes, such as creating logos, websites, and marketing materials. Art, on the other hand, is a broader term that encompasses a wide range of visual expressions, from painting and drawing to sculpture and photography. 
To help your child develop their graphic design and art skills, it's important to provide them with the necessary tools and resources. This could include access to a computer or tablet, software such as Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, and art supplies such as pencils, paints, and paper. Additionally, consider enrolling your child in art classes or workshops to help them learn new techniques and develop their skills. Another important aspect of developing graphic design and art skills is encouraging creativity and experimentation. Provide your child with opportunities to explore different mediums and techniques, and allow them to experiment with different styles and approaches. Encourage them to take risks and try new things, and provide positive feedback and support for their efforts. In addition to providing tools and resources and encouraging creativity, it's also important to teach your child about the principles of design and composition. This includes topics such as color theory, typography, and layout. Consider working with your child to create their own design projects, such as a logo for a family business or a flyer for a school event. This will give them practical experience and help them develop their skills in a real-world context. Important to help your child understand the business side of graphic design and art. This could include teaching them about the importance of branding and marketing, or helping them develop a portfolio of their work that they can use to showcase their skills to potential clients or employers. Another way to support your child's development in graphic design and art is to expose them to examples of great design and art. Take your child to art museums or galleries, or show them online resources such as Behance or Dribbable where they can view the work of professional designers and artists. Encourage them to analyze and critique the work they see, and ask them to identify what makes certain pieces successful. It's also important to help your child develop a strong work ethic and discipline when it comes to their art and design practice. Encourage them to set aside dedicated time each day or week to work on their projects, and hold them accountable for completing their work. Teach them the importance of meeting deadlines and following through on commitments. Another way to support your child's growth in graphic design and art is to connect them with other artists and designers in their community. Consider enrolling them in after-school programs or summer camps focused on art and design, or encourage them to attend local meetups or events for designers and artists. These opportunities can provide your child with valuable networking connections and a supportive community of peers. Important to help your child develop a growth mindset when it comes to their skills and abilities in graphic design and art. Encourage them to embrace challenges and view mistakes as opportunities for learning and growth. Teach them the value of persistence and hard work, and remind them that even the most successful designers and artists started somewhere. Another important aspect of helping your child develop their graphic design and art skills is to encourage them to work on real-world projects. This could involve designing a logo for a local business or creating a poster for a school event. By working on these types of projects, your child will gain valuable experience in the design process, from concept development to final execution. They will also have the satisfaction of seeing their work being used and appreciated in the real world. Additionally, it's important to expose your child to different styles and trends in graphic design and art. Encourage them to explore different design styles, such as minimalism or vintage-inspired design, and expose them to different cultural influences. 
this can help them develop a broader perspective and a more nuanced understanding of the field. Another way to support your child's development in graphic design and art is to help them build a strong online presence. This could involve setting up a portfolio website for them to showcase their work, or helping them build a following on social media platforms such as Instagram or Behance. By building an online presence, your child can connect with other designers and artists, share their work with a wider audience, and potentially even attract professional opportunities. Important to foster a love of learning and a passion for design and art in your child. Encourage them to seek out new challenges and opportunities, and provide them with the support and resources they need to pursue their interests. By fostering a lifelong love of design and art, you can help your child develop the skills and mindset they need to succeed in this exciting and constantly evolving field. Another way to support your child's development in graphic design and art is to encourage them to collaborate with others. This could involve working on a project with a friend or family member or collaborating with other designers or artists in their community. By working with others, your child can gain new perspectives, learn new techniques, and develop their communication and teamwork skills. It's also important to expose your child to diverse perspectives and experiences in design and art. This could involve taking them to events or exhibitions featuring designers or artists from different cultural backgrounds. Or encouraging them to explore different design trends and styles from around the world. By exposing your child to diverse perspectives and experiences, you can help them develop a broader understanding of design and art and a more nuanced appreciation for the field. Another way to support your child's growth in graphic design and art is to encourage them to take risks and push the boundaries of their creativity. This could involve experimenting with new techniques or materials, or exploring unconventional design approaches. By encouraging your child to take risks and embrace experimentation, you can help them develop their unique voice and style as a designer or artist. Important to celebrate your child's successes and accomplishments in graphic design and art. Whether it's a successful project, a new technique they've mastered, or an award or recognition they've received. Taking the time to acknowledge and celebrate your child's achievements can help build their confidence and motivate them to continue pursuing their passion. One of the most important ways to support your child's development in graphic design and art is to provide them with opportunities for feedback and critique. Encourage your child to share their work with others and to seek out constructive criticism from peers, mentors, and other professionals in the field. This feedback can help your child identify areas for improvement, refine their techniques, and develop their own unique style and voice as a designer or artist. As parents, caregivers, and educators, it's important to recognize when a child is feeling uneasy or uncomfortable. Children may express their discomfort in different ways, such as acting out, withdrawing, or displaying physical symptoms. Being able to identify these signs is essential to providing support and help to the child. In this article, we will discuss the various signs that indicate a child is feeling uneasy and ways to help them cope. Signs of discomfort in children Changes in behavior Children who are feeling uneasy may display changes in their behavior. They may become more aggressive, irritable, or moody than usual.
they may also become more withdrawn or less social than they usually are. Changes in sleeping habits Children who are feeling uneasy may also have trouble sleeping. They may wake up more frequently during the night, have nightmares, or have trouble falling asleep. Changes in eating habits Changes in eating habits can also indicate that a child is feeling uneasy. They may lose their appetite, refuse to eat certain foods, or overeat. Physical Symptoms Children who are feeling uneasy may also experience physical symptoms such as headaches, stomach aches, or fatigue. They may also experience panic attacks or have difficulty breathing. Ways to help children cope Identify the root cause. The first step in helping a child cope with their discomfort is to identify the root cause of their distress. It could be anything from a recent change in their environment to a social or academic issue. Communicate with the child. Once you've identified the root cause of the child's distress, it's essential to communicate with them. Ask them how they're feeling and encourage them to express their emotions. Let them know that you're there to help them through this difficult time. Encourage relaxation techniques. Encouraging relaxation techniques can also help children cope with their discomfort. Techniques such as deep breathing, mindfulness, and meditation can help calm the child's mind and reduce stress. Provide a safe space. Providing a safe space for the child to express their emotions can also be helpful. Let them know that it's okay to feel uncomfortable and that they can come to you for support. Seek professional help. If the child's discomfort persists or becomes severe, it's essential to seek professional help. A therapist or counselor can work with a child to identify the root cause of their distress and develop strategies to help them cope. Encourage play and physical activity. Play and physical activity are great ways for children to release pent-up energy and tension. Encourage them to engage in activities they enjoy such as playing outside, dancing, or playing sports. This can also help improve their mood and increase their overall well-being. Establish a routine. Establishing a routine can also help children cope with their discomfort. A consistent schedule can provide structure and stability, which can help reduce anxiety and stress. It's important to create a routine that works for both the child and the family. Provide positive reinforcement. Providing positive reinforcement can also be helpful. Praise the child for their accomplishments and encourage them to continue to work towards their goals. This can help boost their confidence and self-esteem. Teach coping skills. Teaching coping skills is also essential to helping children cope with their discomfort. Skills such as problem-solving, communication, and stress management can help children develop healthy coping mechanisms that they can use throughout their lives. Skills such as problem-solving, communication, and stress management can help children develop healthy coping mechanisms that they can use throughout their lives. Practice self-care. Lastly, 
practicing self-care is essential for both children and adults. Encourage children to take care of themselves by getting enough sleep, eating healthy, and engaging in activities they enjoy. It's also important for adults to take care of themselves to be able to provide the best support and care for the children in their lives. Encourage expression through art. Another way to help children cope with their discomfort is through artistic expression. Encourage them to draw, paint, write, or create in any way they like. This can help them process their emotions and express themselves in a healthy way. Provide a listening ear. Sometimes all a child needs is someone to listen to them. Encourage them to talk about their feelings and experiences without judgment. This can help them feel heard and understood, which can alleviate some of their discomfort. Teach mindfulness. Teaching mindfulness can also help children cope with their discomfort. This practice involves focusing on the present moment and becoming more aware of one's thoughts and feelings. It can help children become more grounded and less reactive to stressors. Foster positive relationships. Fostering positive relationships can also be beneficial to a child's well-being. Encourage them to spend time with friends and family members who make them feel good about themselves. Positive relationships can provide support and a sense of belonging, which can help alleviate discomfort. Model healthy coping mechanisms. Finally, it's important to model healthy coping mechanisms for children. They learn by watching the adults in their lives, so it's important to demonstrate healthy ways to cope with stress and discomfort. This can include taking breaks, using relaxation techniques, and seeking support when needed. Encourage a growth mindset. Encouraging a growth mindset can also be helpful in helping children cope with discomfort. A growth mindset is the belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through hard work and dedication. By teaching children to embrace challenges and see mistakes as opportunities to learn, they can develop a sense of resilience and perseverance. As a parent or caregiver, you want your child to have the best start in life possible. One way to do this is by helping them develop their spatial abilities and imagination. These skills are essential for a variety of tasks, including reading, writing, and problem solving. Fortunately, there are many ways to foster these abilities in children. The first step to developing spatial abilities and imagination is to provide children with opportunities to explore their environment. This can be as simple as giving them a few toys to play with or taking them outside to explore nature. Encourage them to touch, feel, and manipulate objects in their environment. This will help them develop a better understanding of spatial relationships and how things fit together. Another way to develop spatial abilities and imagination is to encourage children to engage in creative play. This can involve building with blocks, drawing pictures, or creating stories. The key is to allow them to use their imagination to create something from nothing. This will help them develop their spatial reasoning skills and encourage them to think creatively. Reading is another great way to develop spatial abilities and imagination. When children read, they are transported to another world, and their imaginations are free to run wild. Reading also helps develop spatial reasoning skills, as children must visualize the events of the story in their minds. 
Encourage your child to read a variety of books, including fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Puzzles and games are also excellent tools for developing spatial abilities and imagination. Puzzles require children to think critically and use their spatial reasoning skills to fit the pieces together. Games such as chess, checkers, and other strategy games help children develop their problem-solving skills and spatial reasoning abilities. Essential to provide children with a safe and supportive environment where they feel comfortable exploring and experimenting. This means allowing them to make mistakes and encouraging them to try new things. When children feel supported, they are more likely to take risks and develop their spatial abilities and imagination. Continuing on the topic of developing spatial abilities and imagination for children, it's important to note that different children have different learning styles and preferences. Some children may be more visual learners, while others may be more auditory or kinesthetic learners. As such, it's important to provide a variety of learning opportunities that cater to different learning styles. For visual learners, providing visual aids such as diagrams, pictures, and videos can help them better understand spatial relationships and concepts. For auditory learners, listening to music, telling stories, or engaging in conversation can help stimulate their imagination and creativity. For kinesthetic learners, providing hands-on activities such as building models or playing with sensory toys can help them develop their spatial abilities and imagination. It's also important to note that developing spatial abilities and imagination is a lifelong process, and it's never too late to start. Even adults can benefit from engaging in activities such as solving puzzles, playing strategy games, or taking up a hobby that involves spatial reasoning, such as woodworking or gardening. Furthermore, it's important to encourage children to think outside the box and challenge their assumptions. This means asking open-ended questions and allowing them to come up with their own answers, even if they're not conventional. This helps stimulate their creativity and encourages them to think critically and independently. Important to create a supportive and inclusive learning environment that celebrates diversity and encourages collaboration. This means providing opportunities for children to work together on projects and valuing each other's ideas and perspectives. When children feel valued and supported, they are more likely to take risks and explore new ideas, which can lead to significant growth in their spatial abilities and imagination. One way to further develop spatial abilities and imagination in children is to encourage them to explore different environments and cultures. This can be done by taking them to museums, parks, and other cultural events that expose them to different ways of thinking and experiencing the world. This helps broaden their perspective and stimulates their curiosity and imagination. Another way to develop spatial abilities and imagination is to encourage children to participate in physical activities that require coordination and spatial awareness, such as dance or sports. These activities not only develop physical skills but also help children develop their spatial reasoning and imagination. It's also important to expose children to different types of media, such as movies, television shows, and video games, that challenge their spatial abilities and imagination. This can be done by encouraging them to watch movies or play games that require problem-solving, critical thinking, and creative solutions. Additionally, it's important to provide children with opportunities to express themselves creatively through art and music. Drawing, painting, and playing musical instruments all require spatial awareness and imagination, 
and can help children develop these skills while also providing an outlet for self-expression. Important to remember that developing spatial abilities and imagination is a process that requires time and patience. Children develop at different rates, and it's important to celebrate their progress and encourage them to continue exploring and experimenting. Another way to foster spatial abilities and imagination in children is to encourage them to engage in pretend play. Pretend play allows children to use their imagination to create scenarios and stories, and it requires them to understand and manipulate spatial relationships in order to create their imaginary world. For example, a child who is playing with a dollhouse must understand how the furniture fits inside the rooms and how the characters move throughout the space. It's also important to encourage children to ask questions and explore their surroundings. When children are curious about their environment, they are more likely to experiment and develop their spatial abilities and imagination. Encouraging them to ask questions, explore new places, and try new things can help stimulate their curiosity and creativity. Additionally, providing children with opportunities to build things can help them develop their spatial abilities and imagination. This can be done by providing them with building blocks, construction toys, or even simple household items like cardboard boxes and tape. Allowing children to build and create encourages them to think spatially and develop their problem-solving skills. Important to provide children with positive feedback and support as they develop their spatial abilities and imagination. When children feel that their efforts are appreciated and valued, they are more likely to continue exploring and experimenting. Another way to foster spatial abilities and imagination in children is to encourage them to engage in outdoor activities. Nature provides a vast and stimulating environment that encourages children to explore, experiment, and develop their spatial abilities and imagination. As children grow, developing their sense of independence becomes increasingly important. Encouraging children to become independent can help them build self-esteem, confidence, and a sense of responsibility. Additionally, it can help them to learn important life skills that they will need as they continue to grow and mature. There are many ways to encourage independence in children. One of the most important is to give them opportunities to make decisions and take responsibility for their actions. This might involve allowing them to choose their own clothing or toys, or giving them age-appropriate chores or responsibilities around the home. Another important way to encourage independence is to provide children with a safe and supportive environment in which they can explore and experiment. This might involve setting up a play area where they can try new things without fear of failure or providing them with age-appropriate materials and tools that they can use to create and build. It is also important to provide children with positive feedback and encouragement when they take steps towards independence. This might involve praising them for trying new things or acknowledging their efforts when they take on new responsibilities or tasks. In addition to these strategies, there are a number of other things that parents and caregivers can do to help children develop independence. For example, they can encourage children to think for themselves and to express their opinions, even if they don't always agree with them. They can also provide children with opportunities to learn new skills, such as cooking or gardening, which can help to build their confidence and independence. Another important way to encourage independence is to model it oneself. Parents and caregivers who demonstrate independence and responsibility in their own lives are more likely to inspire these qualities in their children. 
For example, parents who set goals and work hard to achieve them, or who take on new challenges and responsibilities, can help to instill a sense of independence and self-reliance in their children. Another important way to encourage independence in children is to provide them with age-appropriate opportunities to socialize and interact with others. This might involve enrolling them in extracurricular activities or sports teams, or encouraging them to join clubs or groups where they can meet new people and develop new skills. By interacting with others in a safe and supportive environment, children can develop important social skills and learn how to navigate different situations. Parents and caregivers can also help children develop independence by setting clear boundaries and expectations. By establishing rules and guidelines, children can learn to take responsibility for their actions and make choices that align with their values and goals. It is important to be consistent and firm when enforcing these rules, but also to be flexible and open to negotiation when appropriate. In addition to these strategies, it can also be helpful to involve children in decision-making processes. For example, parents and caregivers can ask for their input when planning family activities or making decisions about household routines. By involving children in these discussions, they can feel empowered and develop a sense of ownership over their own lives. Another way to encourage independence is to provide children with opportunities to learn from their mistakes. Instead of always intervening and fixing problems for them, parents and caregivers can encourage children to problem-solve and come up with solutions on their own. By allowing children to experience failure and learn from their mistakes, they can develop important resilience and problem-solving skills. It is also important to recognize and celebrate children's successes, no matter how small. By acknowledging their achievements, children can develop a sense of pride and self-worth, which can in turn help to build their confidence and independence. One way to help children develop independence is to encourage them to take on new challenges and try new things. Parents and caregivers can help children set goals and develop a plan to achieve them, while also providing support and guidance along the way. By taking on new challenges and pushing themselves out of their comfort zones, children can develop important skills such as problem-solving, decision-making, and risk-taking. In addition to these strategies, it can also be helpful to provide children with opportunities to practice decision-making and problem-solving skills in everyday situations. For example, parents and caregivers can ask children to help plan meals or to choose a family outing, allowing them to practice decision-making skills in a safe and supportive environment. It is also important to provide children with age-appropriate levels of independence. This may involve gradually increasing their responsibilities and freedoms as they get older, while also setting clear boundaries and expectations. For example, parents may allow older children to walk to school alone or stay home alone for short periods of time, while also setting rules around screen time, curfews, and other behaviors. Parents and caregivers can also help children develop independence by providing them with emotional support and encouragement. This might involve praising children for their efforts and successes, offering guidance and advice when needed and being available to listen and provide comfort when children face challenges or setbacks. Another way to help children develop independence is to encourage them to take responsibility for their own learning. Parents and caregivers can help children develop a love of learning by providing them with a variety of educational resources and opportunities, such as books, educational games, and field trips. They can also encourage children to ask questions, explore their interests, 
and seek out new information on their own. It is also important to teach children how to set goals and work towards them. This may involve helping them break down larger goals into smaller, more manageable steps, and providing them with the tools and resources they need to achieve those steps. By learning how to set goals and work towards them, children can develop important skills such as perseverance, determination, and self-motivation. Parents and caregivers can also help children develop independence by modeling good decision-making and problem-solving skills. By demonstrating how to think critically, make informed decisions, and solve problems effectively. Parents and caregivers can help children develop important life skills that they will need as they grow and mature. Important to give children opportunities to experience the natural consequences of their actions. This may involve allowing them to make mistakes and learn from them, rather than always stepping in to fix things for them. By allowing children to experience the natural consequences of their actions, they can learn important lessons about cause and effect, responsibility, and accountability. One important aspect of fostering independence in children is helping them develop their own identity and sense of self. Parents and caregivers can encourage children to express themselves, explore their interests and talents, and pursue their passions. By supporting children's unique personalities and strengths, parents and caregivers can help children develop a strong sense of self and self-confidence. It is also important to involve children in household tasks and responsibilities from a young age. This may involve simple tasks such as putting away their toys or helping with meal preparation, but as they get older, they can take on more complex tasks such as doing laundry or grocery shopping. By involving children in these tasks, they can develop important life skills such as time management, organization, and responsibility. Another way to help children develop independence is to encourage them to develop healthy habits and routines.